Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with John and Cora and Pamela and Mike. Hoy. What are you drinking today, Mike? Uh, Lagunitas. Um, they're uh, up north uh, in California, northern ish. Uh, it's the uh, Doppel Sticky. Uh, it's, it's good. It's a um, little bit on the sweet side, but thick, so no complaints there. Kind of what, what I'm looking for what in is general. It? Doppel Sticky. I heard the name. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so what is, is like it? A Belgian it's like Belgian lager. It's a, it's a doppel. It's a you know, yeah. You know. It's a type of brand. Yeah. So it's good. Lagunitas um, usually does not um, make bad beer. And accurate again, this is not bad. It is good. So good job, Lagunitas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming the check's going to be in the mail in the next, you know, like you know, four or five business days and, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go on a, like a field trip or something. Yeah, because you know. that happens all the time. Yeah, because <laughs> whenever, whenever we talk about a beer, we get a check in the mail. Yeah, it works pretty good. <laughs> what kind of alcoholic beverage do you have, Cora? <laughs> um, I don't really have one. Just tea. Just tea? What are you drinking there? Is it spiked with a little uh, vodka or something like that? <laughs> Only uh, ginger, cinnamon, and chai. Okay. Hmm. Sounds good. It is. Cora's responsible. The rest of us, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. No, John. Are you a John. John is No, no, call again. No. No. Just checking. So, so I thought we'd talk again this week about the family. Okay. Uh, I think there's a lot more we can go into. Um, one one of the things I wanted to mention. I don't. I don't think it was clear last week was that I am in no way in favor of the subjugation of women. <laughs> was that, and like, something that <laughs> happened? Was that a comment that ended up on the Facebook page or on the well, YouTube channel, I mean? Well, sort of. Really? I, it, w- it was in, my, in response to my comment about the feminist uh, um, movement being... Mm. Uh, it's the hijacking of the feminist movement that... I think has led to to those kind of outcomes, right? Uh, not the core belief that women should have equal rights. So I wanted to make that clear because I don't know that it was clear last week because somebody made a comment. It wasn't it wasn't like a nasty comment or anything. Just just uh, it it was mentioned in a comment though, and I wanted to clear that up. Um. Well, I always assumed you're for brutal oppression, Steve, so my, <laughs> my, my mind has been corrected. Thank you for telling me that you're not, you know, and a tyrant. You know, I always assumed you were I, a tyrant, I didn't, strangely. I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm... I, I, I'm just saying that that uh, people should be equally... Tyrannical. Tyrannic. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Everybody should be <laughs> equal, should be oppressed equally, I guess. Yes. Okay, all right, cool. Well, an you know. Equal, uh, an equal opportunity oppressor? Yes. <laughs> E O O office. <laughs> <laughs> Equal opportunity. Exactly. No, but um, I think I think we should delve a little bit more into what it is exactly that tyrants don't like about the family, and in what ways the family encourages oppression, and what kind of options there are. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's like, really safety in numbers, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. But the quote-unquote traditional family is very... It's hierarchical in that you have the father as the head, and then the mother, and then the children. And that all goes back to, like, you know, Roman nonsense. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, if you really want to think of the origin of that, it goes back to... To uh, Roman period, uh, the uh, head of the household was, you know, the, 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 the married man, and uh, he was the paterfamilias, was a title, yes. and he had complete control over the whole family, and he could order them to do whatever he wanted to. Now, that... Even, be- had the, even have them killed. Even have them killed. Like, that was... 
paterfamilias. That was it was his family. Could, now that being said, um, that sort of exercise of power, if you want to term it that, wasn't done very often in the sense of like, oh well, you know, it wasn't you, exercised yeah. strictly very. Uh, Real often. Exactly. You know, it was definitely like a thing, but it wasn't necessarily like that every man who had a family was just, you know, some horrible asshole, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, I think, I think too, what, what made that system so appealing to the Romans at the time is that they, pe- tyrants are a small group of people amongst society. Mm-hmm. So they can't, actively control every person in every place. Mm-hmm. So they farm out the responsibility oh, yeah. to the father and then below him the mother uh, in this in this uh, hierarchical structure. Just a patriarchy, I get it, okay. Continue exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it becomes this, this system of hierarchy. You got um, the family unit that is then is then uh, subject to the 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 local tyrant, who's then subject to the to the emperor, mm-hmm. uh, or the regional tyrant, and then the emperor. Uh, your lord and vassal, sort of. Right. You know. uh, but <coughs> with the with the with the more individualist ideas that came out of the Renaissance, uh, the Enlightenment mm-hmm. in the 19th century, you had sort of this idea that the family was then sovereign in itself, which modern day tyrants don't like. Be- oh, yeah. Because, you know, you have uh, with, the, with the inclusion of the Prussian system of education, they can now train their slaves, aka us, mm-hmm. to police ourselves. So they don't need the family so much anymore to keep control. Instead, you have schools keeping control of the kids and after school programs. And then when they get older, they have their boss and the local government. Uh, and on up the chain so that you've removed this individualist spirit from the family unit. But the family unit still originated in tyranny itself and still leads to tyranny in the quote-unquote traditional sense. So what's, what's the alternative to this patriarchal system? I think you you have you have a lot of examples of um, different tribes, and not even tribes, but like you know a lot of cultures. If you, if you go back to you know um, uh, a lot of sense sense of Celtic uh, Celtic traditions of well, okay, so everybody's got their kid, and this is obviously their kid, their lineage. You know, we you know, it's important to know whose child is whom, but it's kind of understood. And is that, it, and is, that, it, is it really that important? Um, mm-hmm. There's a. Uh, I encourage anybody to go check out uh, David Freeman's uh, draft of the book he's been working on for like five years. Uh, okay. It's the legal system's very different from our own, or something along that line. Right. But okay, he's got. Where that's a five-year-long project <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. He's he's got a chapter in there on on the Roma though. And there's one particular group who, um, to make the long story short, there's a whole lot of dynamics and stuff that he goes into why they have this system. But essentially the children are parented by all the, uh, they're basically daughter or or son to, uh, the mother is every woman of that generation. That that's kind of what I was. It was uh, so what I was kind of getting at. Yeah, was that there? You, you have plenty of cultures where it's like, okay, yeah. So, the the kids, you know, their parents are are these people, but at the same time, you, there there's a very obvious tradition in that culture of, hey, so 
you're gonna watch after the kid, right? Because the kid's around and it's a you know child that doesn't you know doesn't know the world as well as you do. You can even keep an eye on it, right? And everybody just did, you know. So that's something that is kind of lost today in the sense of like, oh well, there is some kid wandering around. We don't know whose it is. Let's call the cops and see whose kid it belongs to. You know, instead of just being like, well, that's hey, because so. that's because the children are the responsibility of the government now. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the sort of thing you know like i'm i'm sitting here thinking about like when i was a kid like i ran away from home for the hell of it just for you know i wanted to i don't know see the world you know i was i was five <laughs> you know what i mean like i wanted to see the world so i you, you know have a stick with the oh yeah no yeah i almost did yeah, I, I, I almost had a hobo <laughs> bindle i was so close to having a hobo build, bindle <laughs> anyway so you know i mean haphazard plan not planned at all waiting for my grandparents to be distracted by something i boogie out walk down the road one of the neighbors narked me out. <laughs> yeah, it was just one of the neighbors like, hey, where are you going with, like, your teddy bear and, like, meager belongings? And I'm like, I'm I was way too honest about it. I'm like, I'm running away from home. And she's like, why would you want to do that? I'm like, I don't know. It seems like there's some interesting stuff out there. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Like, that was the conversation. Well, you should really get in the car and go back home. I, I don't want to. Really, you should. I was like, oh, okay. A rambling man from the very beginning. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's that was just one of my neighbors who was just like, yeah, probably not the best idea for him to be wandering around, you know, away from home for, like, long distance. It's like something I learned recently, and I don't know how relevant it is to the subject, but so I think when we were going to Elfin Forest, mm -hmm. I saw signs for single-family homes, and I was like, well, what is a single-family home? And I looked it up, and I found that the dynamic changed around the 40s after World War II. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the dynamic of the family was the grandparents lived with yeah. the daughter or the son and they raised the children and watched them while the ch their children went out and earned a living. So everybody had a role to play and everybody was involved with the upbringing of the younger children. So after World War II that completely changed. They created single family homes and, and parents went off to single uh, like to uh, skilled nursing facilities you know yep. just the responsibility of, of caring for the elders just completely went away, and it was all about just your immediate nuclear family. Could it, could it That's be, why I think we have this 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 idea that the elderly are essentially worthless today is because that's why they they're are put pushed off into yes. these homes away from the public eye, yes. so we don't have to worry about them. Well, the government also has stepped in and offered these programs where they're funding these skilled nursing facilities uh -huh. to care for the elderly. And really, if you've been to a SNF, it is not good care. I mean, yeah. literally, they are yeah, it's unsupervised. They're not entertained. Their minds aren't stimulated. They are lacking medicinal care. Here's it's your ham and, and, and split pea soup without any salt or pepper. Here you go. <laughs> this is one of those yeah. things where uh, when the government gets involved and it, the costs are offset, subsidized, mm -hmm. then... Uh, pre-existing programs fall by the wayside and then it becomes after a generation it's not in the consciousness of those to take care of the parents like the government will social do it. security and workman's compensation and these things Pensions. existed back in the 1700s you know privately you know it may have been a, a guild of silversmiths or whatever the case they right. pulled together and and took care of their own and you don't see that anymore. You know. And think about the other aspect of, of, of taking the the odds are likely eldest generation, your, your grandparents, away from a family and putting them somewhere where you're not necessarily having as much communication with them. You're losing... You're losing information. All the experience. Yeah, you're losing information. There, there are, There's stories of experience and things of, you know, all, all sorts of things that happened in their life and whether whether it be the history of, of their of their city, their, their their country or whatever, or just simply, you know, just, you know, where your great grandparents came from, what did they do the for like all shaman. yeah. All that yeah, all that sort of stuff. That's now be like, oh well they're over there and you you know, and everything in the culture is oh, you don't want to talk to grandma and grandpa because they're kind of kooky. You know, it's kinda of like that. Don't you see that? Like I think a little bit in T V mm -hmm. and stuff, like grandpa's kooky, you know. But the government is kind of aided in that. <clears throat> think no, absolutely. Yeah. 
you have to work harder to make to really earn a buck, so you don't have the time to care for your parents. Mm -hmm. You're having to you work know, two jobs instead of one. Serious needs, mm -hmm. right? Well, well, so. back in the day, either too, it wasn't just they weren't just like children. They they still helped helped out in the. They cooked meals. They took care of the kids. Right. Exactly. Yes, they picked up the loose ends where you couldn't working full time job. Yeah, they could still bag groceries or do yeah. things like that too. That you know they could still have a job. I know in the Middle Ages, you even had entire families living in one room. I mean, it was mostly because they had to, but, I mean, it was like, you had, if you had two rooms, it was the, it was the parents who got one room and all the kids and grandparents lived in another room, if you had two rooms. So, Cora, what do you think we should do with the elderly, grandmas and grandpas? Well... Give them their own room and... <laughs> yes! You don't want Grandma and Grandpa moving into your room? Well, she has her Aunt Pamela there. <laughs> <laughs> if there were a bigger room, then they could. <laughs> but, but if they want to, they can. But they can do what they want to. Should we feed them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's very important. Let them sleep. Let them sleep. Let them drink. Alcohol? No. Okay, just check it. But what if so Grandpa? You're what if Grandpa wants a scotch though? We, you know, <laughs> that was, wait. No, that was that was the other episode. Trambui. Never mind. Trambui. <laughs> Never mind. Trambui. Her Grandpa likes Trambui. Ah, Trambui. And MGD. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Which one's first? What do you mean? Which one does he drink first? The can of beer or the little glass shot glass? Which comes first? The She's shot not. Yeah, it comes last. It's okay. It's good. <laughs> Beers and liquor. Yeah. Never sicker. Never sicker. It works for him. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to that. That little ditty. Yeah, Mythbusters did something on that, and they proved what, beer, liquor, liquor, beer. You're yeah, still what, get sick. what that essentially comes down to is you're less likely to overdrink if you drink your hard alcohol first. That's yeah. all that is. Okay. I wonder if it's the sugars in some of the liquor that's... Mm. I don't know. It, 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 could be that it, it could be that it metabolizes different. You know? Anyway. So so we were on a tangent, and then... Yeah, I think Grandma should be able to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's bring it back to... She can wear the hell she wants. She's yeah. old. <laughs> She's lived her life. Yep. Yeah, I mean, both my, no, both, yeah. both my grandparents were like, you know... Avid wine drinkers, you know, it wasn't that, you know, they're getting smashed every day. But, you know, they, they drank because, well, you, that was part of the culture, too. That's something else that's really changed a lot. I know we already kind of did a show earlier about alcohol, but it, it does relate that uh, alcohol was something that wasn't as much of a taboo. Not that everybody's getting, like, blotted all day every day, but, you know, there's a, somewhere, if you look it up, there's a, like, meal for, like, a jury in, like, 1880, and it's like, and shot of whiskey. So the, the, the jury's having a shot of whiskey, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, in really other parts sweet. of the world, too, it's not taboo. Mm -hmm. Mostly, you know, in those cultures where children aren't barred from drinking, for instance, you know, wine at dinner or something, um, you don't have the alcohol problem that you have in cultures like here in America, where you turn, you go off to college and get smashed drunk every weekend. Right. But, you know, so we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, having, you know, grandma. It's all the destruction of culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so gra grandma and grandpa go off to, you know, the, the, the uh, home of the useless, to borrow a term from an uh, Ayn Rand book, the, the home of the useless. Um, that was Anthem, I think. Which is one of, well, actually one of my favorite Ayn Rand stories is like one of the shorter ones, surprise, surprise. But, um... <laughs> she could go on forever. Yeah, she's been known to write some words. Um, <laughs> anyways, but, um, the, op the exact opposite end of the scale is, um, I can't t take care of my crazy kids, so here's daycare. You know, yep. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too busy. I'm too busy, so let's, let's drop the kids off at daycare and... And hope for the best. Cross your fingers. You know. I was a single mom for four and a half years, and I worked to pay daycare. Mm -hmm. It was kind of... Yeah. I felt like it was uh, <clears throat> really a waste of time to work, but 
Well, you you got you got wrapped up in it, and, and yeah, it happens. No no guilt, you know, and it's not it's not like a judgment. Like somebody who does that is a horrible horrible person. There's all sorts of like things that are wrapped up into why all these things happen. I mean, why is it that, that, that both parents are working? And I'm not saying like, oh, you know, women should be in the kitchen. That's not what I'm saying. Why is it that both parents are working either one? When that didn't used to be that way, but yet, you know, bills were paid, food was provided, all that sort of stuff. And now it's gotten to the point where, okay, well, so the kids aren't at home and you're working all day and then you're having to travel all this distance too. Trust me, this is all like, this is all a big... Kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you the, you know you have zoning and this. The, trust me, this also somehow relates to families. I'll get to it. I swear. So you've got zoning <laughs> laws that are like okay. So your housing's all over here. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, that's so another you, good, yeah. really good point. You so to. so your housing's all over there, and your commercials over here, and your industrials way over there. So, all right. So I want to go to the market uh, after work. <laughs> You gotta fucking drive, don't you? I'm sorry, Cora. It flipped out. I had a beer or two. It's my bad. Um, so you gotta, you know, you, uh, you, you gotta drive to go get the your groceries. They're four or five miles away. You could walk it, but it's gonna take a long time. Oh wait, and then works way over there. You gotta drive twenty miles to work, and then come back. And so all this, you know, it's a time sucker. Mm-hmm. So you don't have time to come back and do the things that, like, you know, that are that. You want to do, you know, if you're a responsible person, but you can't do because you don't have the time. You need to sleep at one point or another. God forbid you eat. So, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's all wrapped up into this, you know, break up these communities so that the, they're forced to rely upon the local government that's like, you know, at the drop of a hat, oh, sure, you're having some problems with stuff? Have some money. Oh, you're having some problems? Have some money. Is Well, you know, it, we'll, we'll give you whatever you need to oh, make you happy. I like something this guy. Else, Let's vote for him. Yeah. Something else related to that is that there are all these federal holidays that most workplaces recognize but don't observe, meaning you do not get the day off. Mm-hmm. But your kids have the day off from school, which means you have another <laughs> yep. day that you pay for care for people to raise your children. While you're working to make an end mm-hmm. to the means. So, yeah. I mean, the government's involved in so many ways. And sadly, most people, like, I know that are my age are working two jobs. That's that's nonsense right there. Two yeah. jobs? Yeah, like, and not just on. like, oh, I want to work two jobs because I'm saving up to get a new car or something. Like, I mean, a really good friend of mine has to work two jobs to pay his rent. Has to. So this is like an economic analysis of the complex life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. So, so much more complex. Yeah. So uh, kids. yeah. I had friends back in the day that would, they were married forever, and they wanted children. And they always said, well, we're not going to have kids until we're financially able to support them. And I never understood that until now, well, until this point. I mean, I understood it, but I never saw it as a deterrent to have children. You know, I figured you just do what you have to do. You know, the government mm-hmm. helps. Things will it, uh, work out. Yeah. Now I see that and I respect it more so than I did back then. But, yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, getting back to what you are saying mm. about zoning and all that. Right. What's interesting is that happened right around the turn of the 20th century. Okay. All, all that kind of stuff. Um, back then, for instance, the road was for everyone all all modes of transportation mm-hmm. freely walk through the roads because without it's a, a problem road. right. <laughs> right yeah and what happened was because of this advent of this invention the car mm-hmm. people were getting hit by cars right and so the car manufacturers it's came up with this hour, which is kind brilliant of idea mind, but, yeah, sorry. <laughs> instead of saying hey we need to we need to make our cars safer or driving safer they said, no, these guys should not be in the road. These jaywalkers. Back then, jay was a derogative term for basically slow, backward people, hillbillies, the, kind the, of. The hill folk, yeah. Yeah. And so everybody started call, calling them jaywalkers. And Go back to the that, hills and make thus, the moonshine. Thus, the roads became just for cars. Mm-hmm. And... This then separated us from the market, from from our jobs, from the industry. Mm-hmm. So now you have to drive everywhere to get to get anywhere. Yeah. Um, Especially in like Southern California. I mean, the, mm. the you know it's the well, on the West in general. Yeah. 
things like, are closer together in the East Coast, I understand. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that, that is accurate. I had a friend from Virginia Beach. He used to say that if it was more than an hour drive, that was a weekend trip. Oh, gosh, when I lived in Florida, you didn't, I mean, somebody lived 45 minutes away. It was like, okay, you plan to visit them. Now, I mean, I do that when you have to do it, just to give, and you become a road warrior living here. If you don't, you just don't get out. Yeah, so, so when did you, like, weld the barbed wire to your car and have, like, the axe, like, you know, <laughs> in a little holster next to the driver's side door? You said road warrior, and I just thought you were, you know. When I moved to California. And that just happened. You're just like, yeah, I got a, cal in the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's a desert out there. There's long distances in between. You don't know what's going to happen. you got to prepare for everything. Going to mm. Stewart was like a drive for me. It's like, oh, no, I can't do that. It's different here. So yeah, what's this is a big county. It is. It is. But... Riverside's even bigger. Riverside's the biggest county in the U.S., I right. understand. I thought Good it was, in, I thought it was Imperial County. Was. No, I think it is Riverside. Oh, okay, because Imperial County is, like, gigantic, and there's nothing to that. So. I think Riverside Sheriff's Department is, like, I, could, I think it's the largest law enforcement agency. Sheriff's Number two is, like, the NYPD or something. Like, hey, yeah, the so big here's municipal, right? This yeah. whole county, and here's this little island in, of Gestapo, and, you know, yeah. New York City was a blast, but the cameras everywhere. Like it's super creepy. You're just walking around like, oh look, camera, I NYPD. Oh, well, there's creepy. cameras here everywhere. Well, now. yeah, but every I mean, stoplight. I lived in England. They had CCTV everywhere. I mean, everywhere. You were I, in town. You'd go to the market. I mean, just cameras pointing. At you. I think it's funny that everybody like at least has a good sense of humor about them over there. It's like, oh, camera. Mm, here's some spray paint and and silly string just for the hell of it. They're, you know, everybody gets drunk and wanders out from the bar. They're like, ha 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 ha, silly <laughs> string over the camera. You know, it's that's not. That's the only way they can face recognition. They can find you now. Yeah. That's when you get those special lights that blot out your face. Yeah. <laughs> Or, anyway. just wear, or just wear a Guy Fox mask. I mean, really, <laughs> let's just make it easy. Yeah, Guy yeah. Fox mask in in uh, in England. I'm sure that goes would go over well. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's Guy Fox Day. They shoot off fireworks. It's a holiday. It's well, that's to celebrate when he got caught. Though. Well, yeah, <laughs> this is true. And really, John, will tell you the story. It wasn't that he was this big tyrant. He really was supporting the Catholic yeah. side. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He, he was so. not. He was not the was hero that, no. yeah. that people V makes him out to be. Well, yeah, if you're going to blow up a building full he, of a couple hundred He didn't people, like the Protestant you know. king, and he wanted to replace him with a with a Catholic one. Yeah. That's what that was. One puppet for another. Mm-hmm. Well, it could be argued that you wouldn't have the monetary system we have today if it was still Catholic. Not that I'm That's a possibility, but then again, <laughs> all the money would just be in Rome instead. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is really interesting. I was watching a, a, a documentary on uh, on the Vatican uh, a couple months ago. And, you know, so the Pope's residence is in this, like, a, apartment building thing uh, next to St. Peter's Basilica. And there's a light left on in the window always where the Pope's residence is. And so it's just kind of a cutesy thing. Oh, look, the Pope lives up there, and there he is. And, you know, of course, it's probably, like, bulletproof glass and all this sort of stuff. But it's a little apartment up there, right? But then they were showing it like, oh, this is the Vatican Bank, and it's a straight-up castle. It's got turrets. <laughs> it's 10-foot thick walls. It's like, hmm, which is more important here, the Pope or what's in there? So it told me, you know, that's one of those things that like, tells you everything you need to know. 10-foot walls, min- you know, turrets on each corner. Okay. Okay, the Vatican Bank. Got it, you know. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. so. That's if, a completely different conversation, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a little bit of a tangent, but I was sitting here thinking, so, like, if somebody, you know, had a robot and, you know, felt particularly, like, you know, close to the robot, you know, would they be able to go beyond just normal like oh that's the family robot or something like that it's like this thing? like the jetsons like rosie? Yeah, yeah like rosie yeah yeah, yeah like rosie, the cartoon, rosie. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that time or can we like talk about rosie a little bit because that was a fun show right <laughs> two seasons strangely the jetsons that was it like is it really? like a cultural really? impact too yeah the jetsons was two seasons what would you take away from the talk or anything that you found interesting or
No. <laughs> she's used to us. She spends a lot of time with us. Yeah, she's used to us crazies. It's really kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, we're out of Thanks time. Thanks for hanging out. I wouldn't say that you guys are crazy, though. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. not being not being told that what I'm nuts. Yeah, what would you say? And we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Say by the bell. Best way to end it as ever. Say by the bell. <laughs> See you, everybody, next one. week.